Hello, this is Azrael. Thank you for tuning in to my channel. And in this video, we are going to be talking about uh, altars, um, specifically necromantic and uh, ancestral altars. Um, and I'm going to give you a demonstration. Uh, the reason why we're going to be doing this is because we're going to be building up, of course, to the actual uh, ritual. Now, necromantic uh, alt well, altars, or any altar, um, actually, um, altars. When you construct your altar for a specific purpose, it after you and everything you place on the altar should be cleansed and blessed for that purpose, for for your ritual. Okay, everything. Now, um, what I'm getting at is that just like you know a sigil that you've probably learned how to make using the alphabet, or even if you've channeled a sigil, okay. Uh, Sigils, when they're charged, they have power, and they, they, they speak to your subconscious mind. The same thing happens with an altar. When you have an altar constructed, it plays on the subconscious mind, just like the regular sigil. And your magic already starts working before you even perform the ritual, believe it or not. Uh, subtly, but it does. Um, <clears throat> and so it, it draws an energy. And, and remember, the very first parts of this course, I was talking about submersion. Where you need to submerge yourself with images of death. Uh, it, again, they don't have to be gory. You know, they're not supposed to be. You know, not trying to freak yourself out. You know, just again, looking at photos of, uh, you know, uh, of people that were pa who have passed on back in the uh, early uh, century, which is a, a good way um, uh, to do that. Which, you know, it's perfect. You don't have to be looking at crime scene photos. You don't have to be looking at. Uh, Anything untasteful, you know, you don't have to make yourself feel uncomfortable. This does not have to be a morbid, uh, morbid thing. What you're just doing is you're aligning yourself with the forces of death, and you know, and you because you're contacting the dead. Um, now, <clears throat> this is where psychopomps come into play. A psychopomp I've mentioned early in a couple of videos, but to be more specific, get more elaborated uh, on the t on the subject, uh, first of all. Again, if you was watching the first parts of these videos where I was giving exercises to help open your astral senses, um, uh, I used uh, uh, ekate or hekate, uh, and and I mentioned that if you're in like, a, you know, if you were like in hoodoo, I mean, you could probably use uh, uh, Saint. Uh, oh shoot, uh, excuse me, uh, Saint Lucy. Um, she is not a psychopomp. Uh, she is a, a person or an entity basically to help you with your divination, okay? Uh, Ikate or Hecate, or Hecate is is a psychopomp. Uh, she, not only is she, you know, rules over uh, crossroads and magic, she also helps with the dead. A psychopomp is a specific spirit that helps communication with the dead and helps the, the soul move on. Um Mine is, of course, I, I, I usually use as Azrael. Matter of fact, he is where the name of my channel. It's where my, I get the name of my channel from, Azrael. Um, now, you could use all kinds of, you know, a psychopomps. Or some, even like, for example, uh, Haiti. And I've mentioned uh, him, and I believe I've mentioned Hel, H-E-L, uh, the daughter of Loki. And if you're doing, like if you're Asatru, you know, she is the ruler of uh, the underworld there in the Norse mythology. Uh you could use Persephone. Now, if you're going to use someone like Persephone, understand that her background, Persephone was kidnapped by Haiti and then accepted to be his bride anyway, but under the condition that she leaves hell or Haiti, she leaves the underworld uh, to be with her mother. And that's when we have spring and that's when we have summer uh, during uh winter and autumn, she goes back to the underworld. So her influence over the dead, if you're going to use like Persephone as an example, her energies only influence during half the year, during autumn and winter. So if you, ch you choose the your psychopomp, if you're going to use one, and they're very important, um, make sure you try to keep within their mythos, okay? Um, also, the, the entity that you're, um, the person that you're trying to make contact with, they have their own religious beliefs. Now, see, this is part of the magic. It's always how you feel, right? 
Does it resonate with you? This isn't necessarily one of those times because you are working with an another consciousness. Well, two extra. The psychopomp and your dead loved one or your clients. Okay. They have their own consciousness. They have their own temperaments. They have their own needs or their own wants. So this isn't when you're doing these kind of rituals. It's not what resonates with you all the time. It's what resonates with them. So obviously, for example, my mother, who uh, she <laughs> this stuff scared her and she hated images of death. So how do I resolve this? If am I, am I going to put images of death on her? ancestral altar? No. Of course, that's why I've, I've been promoting since day one on my channel, two separate altars. Now, many necromancers will combine them. They'll they'll make the ancestral altar and they'll make the uh, necromantic altar all one and the same, or they'll just use the one or, or the other. Uh, so basically you'll have like images of death and images of the people who you're trying, or, or the person you're trying to contact, all on the same altar. I, I like having two separate altars that bring in the energies and then I combine them in the ritual um, or I can have both altars side by side and in the center of the altar is where I'll put my mirror, my black mirror or uh, my crystal ball, my divining uh, uh, form of divination. Uh, now, in any case, uh, in, in the center or it may be even just on my uh, ancestral altar. Now I'm going to get, I'm going to construct them and I'm going to give a demonstration of them. But back to psychopomps, you don't have to use them. But the reason why they're there, the reason why you want to have a relationship with one of these entities, is because they're like a a hired bodyguard. See, with when people are trying to summon their loved ones, they're, they're usually not casting a circle, you know, because they're not, their loved loved ones aren't going to try to hurt them, right? So a lot of this part would be invocation. Uh, to their vicinity, uh, within their area, or within the circle. Um, so this psychopomp helps act as a bodyguard. You see, just because someone's dead does not mean that they're all-knowing, and they're, they might not be available all the time. The more you pray, the more you, you, you put energies their way, that draws them to you. It's like you, you have a, you're shining a light into the ethers. But sometimes, just like here on Earth, you have people that lie. You have deceivers. You have deceivers and liars on the other side that will try to come in and pretend that they are your, you know, your Aunt May. Okay. This is this is why they, uh, people have problems during Ouija boards. Is because they just hop on the Ouija board. They don't add protection. They just shout out to whatever whatever is out there, and then what comes through comes through. That's what's one of the problems it, with Ouija boards is that. It's treated like a game. Uh, and yet, it, believe it or not, yes, a Ouija board is a valid uh, form of communicating with the other side. If done properly and uh, with with these meditations. So you understand, when you're doing a Ouija board, even if you're doing it by yourself, uh, you're still, it's like automatic writing, only you're not using a pen. Which is another form of con contacting the dead. They'll take the, uh, the, the platchette. So, uh, anyways, they'll put a pen or marker at the tip of the platchet, uh, platchet, and move it around and move move about, and that's how they do some automatic writings. Now, because you're allowing the spirit to use your your involuntary muscles to move and communicate, this is, if, you know, if automatic writing and channeling is valid, Ouija boards are definitely valid, um, even though they've been commercialized and they're so cliche, right? But these uh, psychopomps act as a bodyguard to try to make sure that the only thing that comes through is the one you're trying to contact. Big this now this is important too. When you dismiss the spirit, and you're you're always supposed to dismiss the spirit. Um, if this spirit keep who you contacted keeps on materializing uh, physically or in your dreams or so forth, within reason, this might be acceptable. Um, but if it becomes aggressive, whatever's taking talking to you is not uh, who you contacted. If they show aggression in that form, uh, spirits. When you in, in in this business, when you summon a spirit and you send it on its way, 
if they come back to you without being summoned just to say hello or to smile and wave at you, something's wrong. Um, now, if that person comes back to you or the spirit comes back to you and says, hey, listen, dude, don't make a left, make a right, don't make a, don't make a left. If it's coming to you to warn you about something that, that's different, that's, you made a connection with your uh, ancestor or the person you're summoning, and they're coming to you to warn you to, to, to be benefit. But the, when they come to you without a purpose, it's usually because they're trying to make a connection, and that means they never had a connection to begin with, so it might be a deceiving spirit. So you, you have to use judgment, always cleanse your house and so forth. Okay, this, this is very important because a lot of people, they make contact, they think they make contact with the right entity, they let this entity run them, come in their house at will and in, within their space, and it makes the connection stronger. They feed off you kind of like, uh, you know, feed off your energies in your house, like just like a parasite. And it's not who you thought it was. This, this is a possibility. That's why I implore that you use psychopomps. And even then, when you dispel the spirit, uh, dismiss the spirit, eavesdropping spirits. That's another reason why it's important to cleanse your area before the ritual, because eavesdropping spirits, spirits that might even just be in the in, in, uh, area or have came because when you perform any magic right, you're giving off energy. This attracts people, these, these entities, just like a blue light attracts bugs. OK, it just it, this, this is just the reality of it. Uh, so you might have talked to your your loved one, sent them away. But uh, something else might come visit you trying to pretend because you already made contact which is why go by that rule. If, if a spirit comes to you and you didn't summon it, there is a good possibility, not an absolute, but a good possibility that it could be deceiving. So anyways, um, so I guess I'll get, get started. Um, I'm gonna pause the video. I'm going to construct uh, a various altar for an ancestor uh, example and uh, we'll go from there. So talk to you in a minute. 